All right, it's, time to it's a Monday. We're starting a new project, Project Plant. And I know what you're thinking, plants, not that exciting. They just sit there doing their planting thing. Well, believe me, plants can be dramatic. <laughs> One day we'll be big sunflowers. You're depressed, Charlie. You're wilting. I feel like I'm wilting. Keep photosynthesizing. Just keep breathing. In and out. But what about December? I heard in December everything is ice white and winter blows a breath that'll freeze your phylum solid. And there is no green anymore. That's dying, Rick. That's death. December's only one month, Charlie. But, but I, but I... You're not a seed anymore, Charlie. You're not a seed and I'm not a seed. We're not seeds anymore. Nothing can stop that. Nothing can turn that back. But I don't want to be buried in the ground anyway. Do you? No. Rick. I love the sun, Rick. Who doesn't, Charlie? Who doesn't? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. You might learn on Charlie. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. I love the sun, Rick. Who doesn't, Charlie? Who does All right, Project Plant is what we're starting today. And um, uh, today I'm gonna give you just a little bit of background. So we studied um, natural selection and plants are living things and they've been subject to natural selection. And so there's a history of plant life on earth that has changed over time. And that's left us now with a couple of different ways to be a plant, right? There's some plants that um, make beautiful flowers, like apples and maple trees and geraniums. There's some plants that make cones, like pine trees and spruce trees and cedar trees. Um, and then there are some plants that don't even have seeds, they make spores. There are some plants that, anyway, some plants that don't even have vessels in their bodies to move water around. Okay, so we're going to not spend too much time on the history of plants, but what I think is interesting about plants is they have been affected by natural selection over time. And um, the plants we have now are different than the plants that existed years ago, and plants will be different in the future. In fact, flowering plants, probably the most common plant that you think of, have only been around for a short period of time. They have been around for about the same amount of time that the dinosaurs have not, so about 65 million years. And so, like most life on Earth, uh, it appears that plant-like things started in the uh, ancient oceans. And then, of course, uh, we're able to have some descendants have adaptations that allow them to, to survive on land. And so now we have plants and plant-like things that live both in the water and in the land. Technically, <clears throat> most of the plant-like things that live in water we don't consider true plants. We call them algae. We'll learn about that later. Uh, and most of the plant-like things that live on land, we consider true plants. We'll learn what the difference is. But right now, um, you know, there was a time when there were no plants or plant-like things, and then something changed. And what changed were mutations that allowed certain organisms to take something that was abundant in the atmosphere and use it to make their own food. And that stuff that they took was called carbon dioxide. And actually in the ancient earth, 
was loaded with carbon dioxide. You know carbon dioxide because it's a toxic waste. You know, little red gets rid of it in your body. But there was a time when basically the entire atmosphere was full of carbon dioxide. And these guys figured out how to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and then using the power and energy of sunlight, convert it to a uh, stored energy molecule, a sugar molecule that then they could use for it. So basically they didn't have to eat things. They just needed to collect sun, uh, carbon dioxide and let the sun help them uh, make their own food. We call them autotrophs or plant-like things. And that process is called photosynthesis. So what's we're gonna spend the most time on, I think uh, here in the outset, is what is photosynthesis? How does it work? Um, one of the weird things about photosynthesis though is when organisms first started doing this, they created oxygen as a waste product. There wasn't much oxygen in the atmosphere. And when these photosynthetic things started getting really good at doing photosynthesis, they started filling the air with oxygen gas, which seems good, but at the time was terrible. Most life on earth couldn't handle oxygen. It was poisonous. And that was one of the first great mass extinctions. Uh, one of the greatest mass extinctions happened about 2 billion years ago. Almost everything on earth died because of photosynthesis. But lucky for us, our ancestors, our ancestors, we have descended from, were one of the things that were able to survive the oxygenation of the atmosphere. Whew. If they didn't, we wouldn't be here now in school. All right, so, you know, if we look at evolutionary history or the history of Earth, we're about 5 billion years ago, the Earth, the oldest rocks we have on this planet are about 4 billion years old. We first seen life about 3.8 billion years ago. And then somewhere in that next billion and a half years, organisms figured out how to do photosynthesis and then they poison the atmosphere. Their descendants survived. And what we think of as like plants, the ones that make flowers anyway, are pretty recent. Um, yeah, so we're gonna start, I think, by focusing on this thing called photosynthesis. It'll be fun because it'll look like science because we get to use all these chemical formulas. So one of the things your target is going to be is to know how do plants do photosynthesis? And then we're gonna concentrate, okay, on how do plants um, move materials around in their bodies? What other things besides doing photosynthesis do they need to live? And then finally, how do plants make new plants? And uh, to help us do that, we are going to grow our own plants. And then of course, at the end of this project, we'll do a Francesco Redi style experiment on our plants to see if we manipulate something that should affect their growth if it has any effect. All right, so we're off on project plant today. Um, you've switched into the new classroom. So right now, uh, get to work on part two where you're gonna learn about photosynthesis. Today we're focusing on photosynthesis. I love the sun, Rick. Who doesn't, Charlie? Who doesn't?